Hello everyone, Lou here. Today we're doing an FAQ on armatures. Now, I actually have a doll that I just finished today, and I thought that this would actually be a really cool example of how poseable armatures can be, because this this guy is just a monster. Like, he can go in any direction. And believe it or not, he just has a wire inside of him. There's no ball joints, there's um, honestly very little as far as um, armature making goes. He, he was extremely basic and the real, the only real, um, the only real like tricky part was like right here because these are actually attached to the armature inside and what I did for that was I made a piece of armature that wasn't going to be posable. So he's all one wire going through and these are attached to that wire. But then I have a second wire inside of there just to kind of maintain some of that posability um, so that if they needed to, they could move this part. So this part is, you know, completely movable, not stationary. Um, so this is, I thought was a pretty cool idea of how armatures are. So, he's uh, no legs, nothing like that, so he's a pretty cool example for an armature, I thought. So let's start with the basics here. So when you're looking at what kind of animal that you want to make, you're going to want some kind of sketch. Now this is a really tiny sketch, obviously. But this gives you a basic idea of what you're looking for. You want to find a skeleton that you can copy onto a piece of paper that is the size of your art doll. You need the skeleton to be the same size because with this you're actually going to take each individual piece of armature and lay it out across the skeleton on the paper and it's especially for the spine and also, it kind of helps you with figuring out how big to make the head, how big to make the paws, and how long to make the legs. Now there's some tricky bits when it comes to making the legs, and, and that is the area where it connects to the spine. Depending on how big of a doll you're making, you're going to want to add a little bit of extra length to your legs, because that's going to become the hip bone or the shoulder blade in your doll. Um, the other thing to take into consideration is like I had mentioned in the first video, when you're making the head for your doll, you're really just making the face and you're gonna want to leave a little bit of extra length on the spine to account for the fluffiness um, that is going to become the head to your face. So that's on the basic of um, how to set up your armature. Now, KP goes into further, like, example of this because sometimes when she's making her doll, she'll have this printed off and that's one of her tricks. Um, and she shows you how to do it, so I will leave a link right here, probably, um, to her channel once again, um, so that you can see how to do that. So let's talk about some of the stuff that you need to make armatures. Now, number one that you're probably going to think about is ball and, sock ball and socket armatures, which is what k Pei kind of introduces us to in her videos. Now, ball and socket isn't too expensive um, if you're just going to make one for yourself. Um, feel free to use ball and socket. There's also little um, pieces that you can buy in the... I think it's JRC's Crafts. KP usually links them. Um, the I, I, I don't know the, the name of it because I actually don't buy through them anymore. Um, this is the last piece that I have that I bought through them. Um, and I do have some of their pieces. Give me one second. If I can find them. Like I said, I usually I don't use them anymore. Um, it in here. Yes, yes. So, 
I do have some of their pieces, which are just very basic. Um, these larger pieces are for larger size bond socket pipes, which I think I actually have an example of over here. Yes, I do. One second. I was not at all prepared to go into these. I had I had everything lined up, and I remember stuff as I go. Oof. So this is a fourth inch and this is three fourth inch. These are for like if you want to make a life size snow leopard or a lion or something. But these are good for just most dolls. Um, I think KP actually has been, she's been printing hers out because I've seen her using some that are itty bitty. <laughs> Um, and I know that you can actually get these on, like, websites like AliExpress and Alibaba, um, but what I actually do is I'm, I'm a sucker and I, I buy into Amazon, um, and so when I first started, I found this company called Lockline, which makes ball and socket, um, but they're they're actually meant to be coolant pipe hose. <laughs> it's, it's a mouthful. So. Um, now sometimes you'll get this and it will have a little one, one, this is honestly, I've bought um, six of these bundles so far and this is my first one that is actually damaged. So I'll just pop that one off and pop it back in. Um, this is $5 and it's for two and a half meters which is five feet i believe i just know it's five feet and in, in my um normal way of measuring and they have the attachers or the detachers for like ten dollars on there which if you go through the website where you get these which are the jeton brand um crs crafts i believe um the pliers for them because they're doll pliers are like 25 to 30 dollars so good hint uh these are only 10 bucks on amazon if you just look for the pipe coolant hose pliers um and this was 25 for five feet of it so it's five dollars a foot um and if you get it through the jrc's crafts the last time i saw i think it was like 375 a foot but they run out of stock very quickly and sometimes you can order it and it won't be it won't be advertised as out of stock and then you'll be waiting like weeks or in my case months for mine to come in um but i do like them for these but again um if you just know where to look oh that's not fun this one's like melted on the inside i didn't do that that came like that um but you can also get these on aliexpress if you know what you're looking for this is once again a fourth inch um where's this one no, it's a fourth inch. Okay. These are a fourth inch, and that is what I most commonly use. But keep in mind that I make life size animals for the most part. Um, so I, you know, I use these to make my life size owls, to make my life size phoenix. Um, I would use these for something like uh, Pegasus foals that I have planned. Um, but here's how I use it I use this as just the spine because these little doohickeys over here, yeah, they're only one way. So um, you can use it on the large end, but you can only use it on the large end. And these have a small end on the other side. So you can, you know, separate out and flip it, but you're not gonna get anything with four legs just by using these. You actually have to use a fancy little Y doohickey that it's just, it's honestly a pain. And so what I do is I use these for the spine and then to make the legs, I use wire. And now here's the wire that I use. These are hay baling wire ties. This wire is extremely thick. I don't actually know what thickness this is, but I do know that number one, it's a little bit messy. So, um, Sometimes, you know, you might want to wipe it down if you're going to be working with it a lot. In my case, 
I most often will take this and braid it back on itself um, to make usually wings for my owls. Honestly, I, I take four cords of this and braid it together and then wrap it with da -da -da -da, duct tape. So the duct tape trick I learned from... Sorry about that, there was a baby crying. Um, the duct tape trick I learned from my animal dolls and at the same... No, I'm not gonna get ahead of myself, there's another tip, sorry. Okay, so I wrap, I braid this, wrapped in duct tape, and that acts as some really nice um, wing bones for the, for the owls that I make, but it also makes the legs for the owls that I make. I would also use this for any kind of legs, um, for like I mentioned if I was making a life-size horse full, um, I would probably still quadruple the ties. Um, but if you're just making something small, like a rat size, one layer of this would be perfectly fine. The um, seahorse that I mentioned, something of that size doesn't necessarily need the wires to be braided together for extra strength. Um, but yes, so something of a rat size would be perfectly fine to build the entire skeleton just out of the wire even. Um, so. The way that I connect the wires to the ball joint is I will wrap each piece individually, usually around its own joint, and then I will braid the three pieces together for one side of a wing or a leg, and then for the other leg or other wing, I do the same on this side. So get a close up of how I do that. I wrap it all the way around to where it's like this. So, after it's wrapped, I go ahead and I wrap up duct tape around the braid itself, but I also wrap duct tape around the wires and the ball armature so that it stays in one position, basically, so that the legs won't go whoop on the other side of the, of the skeleton. That can pop stitches, depending on how you are um, sewing the fur together. So... Another way to make sure that that doesn't happen and to attach the wires to the ball and socket is using epoxy sculpt. Epoxy sculpt is a two-part epoxy that when you mix it together will create like a dough that is sticky and if you put it on within the first, thir first 30 seconds it sticks to the ball and socket and the armature and the wire keeping in mind that if you use this stuff the ball and socket will not bend right where the wire is. So that's the other nice thing about the duct tape is that it will continue to bend. But this basically makes it a stationary hip. And so you won't be able to bend anything. You won't be able to remove it later if you messed up. Um, it's very hard to remove the duct tape, but it's possible. But nevertheless, this is still a really good option. It's also good for attaching the skull to the ball and socket sometimes but most people prefer to use hot glue, a really good hot glue. Not like the dollar store stuff, but like Gorilla Glue hot glue would be a good, um, a good one. Um, another way to secure it, it, it's a little bit messier, super glue. Um, it can be done, I have done it, but it's not as quick as you might think because the super glue doesn't make things hold together right away unless you're applying friction. Once you've applied friction to it, it will hold it together for, for a really long time. But until you get to that point or it dries, it's not going to hold it together. So that's, um, super glue is more of an option for attaching the headpiece to the ball and socket or the paws to the wires. Um, I've also, I also tend to use duct tape for attaching paws, um, although I have used epoxy sculpt to attach some paws, it just depends on the way that you're designing your paws. If you design them um, to be cast in resin with a wire inside, then just making a longer wire and wrapping it to the braid, um, and then wrapping it in duct tape is more than enough. Um, but if you're making a paw that is out of clay and you have foil inside of it and you need it to adhere, 
then you want to use epoxy sculpt or the super glue. The final way that I know of to attach these wires to the ball and socket is to use more wire. Now you want to use a lower gauge wire than what you are using here. Now that's not to say that you want to use a lower gauge wire altogether because if you're already using a smaller gauge than these, you're probably fine to keep using the same gauge. But so this wire is galvanized steel 20 gauge. It's very cheap. It's made for hobby projects and repairs around the house. Um, and it works really good for just wrapping the wires together. Um, but you're not going to be able to get these to stay in place on the ball and socket with just the wire. You're going to want to use probably epoxy sculpt in combination with these. Um, but it's a really good option I find for if you are trying to tie two pieces of this together, let's say. Um, I used it on the seahorse when I was making the armature and I was making the two pieces of this that were going parallel. Um, one piece to attach the corals to and one piece to continue to be the spine. Um, I basically just had a long piece of wire that went parallel to the other one and I wrapped it with this. It works really well for wrapping wire to wire, um, but it can also be used to, to wrap this um, to the bond socket if you feel like it's just not quite secure enough just with just one go round. Um, it can help you um, with flushing out um, hip bones if you were wanting to do like a stronger hip bone. Um, then you can use this to like kind of not that, not really weave the hip bone around the wires, but just flush it out a little bit. Um, this method, the way that I wrapped it, is also how it's similar to how I wrap my keel bone or my sternum bone um, when I'm making the rib cage um, because I don't. I do something a little bit different than a lot of doll artists. A lot of doll artists want that to be soft still, but I make a lot of birds, and with birds, the front of the front of the rib cage on the bird is really important for it looking right. And so this piece right here on the bird, yeah, um, I make that out of wire. And so when I'm doing that, let me just cut another piece of wire to give a demonstration. Um, when, I'm, when I'm making the keel bone, what I tend to do is, depending on the kind of bird, you're, there's two main kinds of birds that you want to look at when you're making a keel bone. Um, so basically I would just wrap the wire, one time is usually more than enough because this wire is so thick, so I would just wrap the wire around and then start shaping the the front bone that connects the rib cages. Um, obviously this piece of wire would be a lot longer and it would go all the way down. Um, and then I would wrap it at the other end of the spine where um, just behind where the legs, like where the hip bones are on the bird, um, I would wrap it at the spine right there. And then from there, um, I would use another piece of wire. I would tie it to this wire, probably using some of this stuff. Um, again, just have the two pieces of wire parallel and then wrap this around it. It really works well. Um, but you can also use um, epoxy sculpt to make it feel even more secure. And then I would just bend the wire um, at a 90 degree angle and make like a half circle and wrap it around the rib cage. And so that's one way that you can go ahead and make rib cages for your dolls if that's something that you're interested in. I know that there's a lot of people who like more macabre um, dolls and so it's a really good way to make like the rib cages that you want to like kind of poke out of the fur. Um, all you have to do is just not duct tape over the top of those bones like I do. I duct tape over the top of the rib cage and that gives it more flesh in between the the bones of the rib 
and then I wrap a layer of fluff around it so that it doesn't look like ribs on a bird. Um, and so yeah, so that is the basics for wire, uh, for armature materials, and that is how I go about utilizing the ball and socket with wires. Um, if you have any questions, remember to leave them down below. Um, I believe next week's video is probably going to be on probably adhesives, actually. Um, just the different kind of adhesives that I use with art dolls. Even though I covered most of them today, there's still a couple of them that are actually really important for art dolls that um, I've found work best and a lot of doll artists have tested uh, hundreds of glues and so we'll be going over the few that we found that work out the best for different scenarios. So um, if you like this video, go ahead and subscribe so that you'll get the notification for that video. Um, I will see you guys later. Bye!